Orantia, Part 2, The Lucifer Rebellion. Lucifer was a brilliant primary La Lanonandek son of Nebadon. He had experienced service in many systems, had been a high counselor of his group, and was distinguished for wisdom, sagacity, and efficiency. Lucifer was number 37 of his order, and when commissioned by the Melchizedeks, he was designated as one of the 100 most able and brilliant personalities in more than 700,000 of his kind. From such a magnificent beginning, through evil and error, he embraced sin and now is numbered as one of the three system sovereigns in Nebadom who have succumbed to the urge of self and surrendered to the sophistry, sophistry of spurious personal liberty, rejection of universal allegiance and disregard of fraternal obligations, blindness to cosmic relationships. In the universe of Nebadom, the domain of Christ Michael, who is Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, and uh, I will speak about that later, who Jesus Christ actually is. There are 10,000 systems of inhabited worlds in all the history of Lanonandek sons in all their work throughout these thousands of systems and at the universe headquarters only three system sovereigns have ever been found in contempt of the government of the creator son 1. The Leaders of Rebellion Lucifer was not an ascendant being. He was a created son of the local universe, and of him it was said, You were perfect in all your ways from the day you were created till unrighteousness was found in you. Many times had he been in council with the most highs of Edentia, and Lucifer reigned upon the holy mountain of God, the administrative mount of Jerusalem. For he was the chief executive of a great system of 607 inhabited worlds. Lucifer was a magnificent being, a brilliant personality. He stood next to the Most High Fathers of the constellations in a direct line of universe authority, notwithstanding Lucifer's transgression, subordinate intelligences, refrained from showing him disrespect and disdain prior to Michael's bestowal on Orantia which is this earth. Even the archangel of Michael at the times of Moses' resurrection did not bring against him an accusing judgment but simply said the judge rebuke you. And see how it is being stated even the archangel of Michael think about that. Judgment in such matters belongs to the ancients of days 
the rulers of the super universe. Lucifer is now the fallen and the deposed sovereign of Satania. Self-contemplation is most disastrous even to the exalted personalities of the celestial world. O Lucifer, it was said, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom because of your brightness. Your olden prophet saw his sad estate when he wrote, How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how are you cast down, you who dared to confuse the worlds? Very little was heard of Lucifer on Orancia, owing to the fact that he assigned his first lieutenant, Satan, to advocate his cause on your planet. So this is exactly what I uh, constantly say, that Satan is the right hand of Lucifer. And <clears throat> us is being taught as Satan is the devil but Satan is the right hand of Lucifer Lucifer is the main you can say motor behind all evilness on this planet and of course because uh, the majority of the human beings here on this planet um, still lack knowledge and this is why the Father, the almighty living God and creator of the universe, is letting me read from the Orantia book. And no matter what you think about this book or, or what you have heard about this book, set it aside and go start read yourself this book and have the Bible with it and see where this book is filling in the lost information in the Bible. So again, very little was heard of Lucifer on Orantia, this planet, what is called Earth, owing to the fact that he assigned his first lieutenant, Satan, to advocate his cause on your planet. Satan was a member of the same primary group of Lanonandex, but had never functioned as a system sovereign. This was his first time to function as a system sovereign. Well, we see the result. <laughs> he entered fully into the Lucifer insurrection. The so-called devil is none other than Caligastia, the deposed planetary prince of Urancia. So here we get what is called in the Bible devil is actually the devil has a name and its name is Caligastia. and a son of the secondary order of the Lanonandex. At the time Michael, bestowal Christ Michael, was on Orantia in the flesh as Jesus of Nazareth, bestowal Christ Michael got born as Joshua ben Yosef, and later became Jesus of Nazareth when he started his ministry. Then his name changed into Jesus. Lucifer, Satan and Caligastia were leaked together to effect the miscarriage of his bestowal mission. Yes, because Lucifer hated the guts of Michael. 
because Lucifer himself wanted that position Christ Michael took and that is the whole war so again Lucifer Satan and Caligastia were leaked together to effect the miscarriage of his bestowal mission of Michael now Christ Michael but they signally failed Abaddon was the chief of the staff of Caligastia so Lucifer has actually a left hand and a right hand working on the right hand Satan on the left hand Caligastia and it is Caligastia that is revered in the Bible as the devil he followed his master into rebellion and has ever since acted as chief executive of the Orancia rebels. Bilsabub was the leader of the disloyal midway creatures who allied themselves with the forces of the traitorous Caligastia. I also will talk about what midwayers are. These are topics that will come during the weeks and the coming months. I follow what the Father wants me to read from this book of which the Father finds necessary that his children on earth get to know. The dragon eventually became the symbolic representation of all these evil personages. Upon the triumph of Michael, Gabriel came down from Selfington and bound the dragon, all the rebel leaders, for an age of the Jerusalem, and here you can see Jerusalem Salem means peace Jerusalem so has that to do with the Melchizedek does the Melchizedek come from there we will see later on in another um, teaching <clears throat> or of the Jerusalem Seraphic rebels, it is written, and the angels who kept not their first estate but left their own habitation, he has reserved in sure chains of darkness to the judgment of the great day. 2. The causes of rebellion. Lucifer and his first assistant, Satan, had reigned on Jerusalem for more than 500,000 years, when in their hearts they began to array themselves against the Universal Father and his then vicegerent son, Michael. There were no peculiar or special conditions in the system of Satania which suggested or favored rebellion. It is our belief that the idea took origin and form in Lucifer's mind and that he might have instigated such a rebellion no matter where he might have been stationed. <clears throat> Lucifer first announced his plans to Satan, but it required several months to corrupt the mind of his able and brilliant associate. So, here we learn that Satan became poisoned eventually by Lucifer's evil 
wicked mind. But it was not done in just a few hours or a few days or a few weeks. No, it took months before the mind of Satan eventually become as corrupt as Lucifer's. However, when once converted to the rebel theories, he became a bold and earnest advocate of, here it comes, self-assertion and liberty. And this is also a poison in the human genome. No one ever suggested rebellion to Lucifer. The idea of self-assertion in opposition to the will of Michael and to the plans of the universal father as they are represented in Michael had its origin in his own mind his relations with the creator son had been intimate and always cordial at no time prior to the exaltation of his own mind did Lucifer openly express dissatisfaction about the universe administration. Notwithstanding his silence for more than 100 years of standard time, the union of days on Selfington had been, re, uh, had been reflectivating to Uversa that all was not at peace in Lucifer's mind. This information was also communicated to the Creator Son and the constellation fathers of Norlatiadek or Norlatiadek. Throughout this period, Lucifer became increasingly critical of the entire plan of universe administration, but always professed wholehearted loyalty to the supreme rulers his first outspoken disloyalty was manifested on the occasion of a visit of gabriel to jerusalem just a few days before the open proclamation of the lucifer declaration of liberty gabriel was so profoundly impressed with the certainty of the impending outbreak that he went direct to Edensia to confer with the constellation fathers regarding the measures to be employed in case of open rebellion. It is very difficult to point out the exact cause or causes which finally culminated in the Lucifer Rebellion. We are certain of only one thing, and that is, whatever these first beginnings were, they had their origin in Lucifer's mind. There must have been a pride of self that nourished itself to the point of self-deception. Wow! <clears throat> Let this sink in. So that Lucifer for a time really persuaded himself that his contemplation of rebellion was actually for the good of the system, if not of the universe. By the time his plans had developed to the point of dissolutionment, no doubt he had gone too far for his original and mischief-making pride to permit him to stop. At some point in this experience he became insincere and evil evolved into deliberate and willful sin. That this happened is proved by the subsequent conduct of this brilliant executive. He was long offered opportunity for repentance. So, he got his many, many windows of opportunity to do repentance for his behavior and evil way of thinking. 
but only some of his subordinates ever accepted the uh, proffered, uh, proffered mercy. The faithful of days of Edentia, on the request of the constellation fathers in person, presented the plan of Michael for the saving of these flagrant rebels. But always was the mercy of the Creator's Son rejected and rejected with increasing contempt and disdain. The Lucifer Manifesto Point 3 Whatever the early origins of trouble in the hearts of Lucifer and Satan, the final outbreak took form as the Lucifer Declaration of Liberty. The cause of the rebels was stated under three heads. One, the reality of the Universal Father. Lucifer charged that the Universal Father did not really exist, that physical gravity and space energy were inherent in the universe and that the Father was a myth invented by the Paradise Sons to enable them to maintain the rule of the universes in the Father's name. He denied that personality was a gift of the Universal Father. He even um, intimated that the uh, final lighters were in collusion with the Paradise Sons to foist fraud upon all creation since they never brought back a very clear-cut idea of the Father's actual personality as it is discernible on Paradise. He traded on reverence as ignorance. The charge was sweeping, terrible and blasphemous. It was this veiled attack upon the finaliters that no doubt influenced the ascendant citizens then on Jerusalem to stand firm and remain steadfast in resistance to all the rebels' proposals. And finaliters is also something that will, uh, during the journey, uh, come and will be explained whom they are. Point two, the universe government of the Creator's Son, Michael. Lucifer contended that the local systems should be autonomous. He protested against the right of Michael, the Creator's Son, to assume sovereignty of Nebadon in the name of a hypothetical paradise father and require all personalities to acknowledged allegiance to this unseen father. He asserted that the whole plan of worship was a clever scheme to aggrandize the paradise sons. He was willing to acknowledge Michael as his creator father but not as his god and rightful ruler. Most bitterly did he attack the right of the ancients of days, foreign potentates, to interfere in the affairs of the local systems and universes. These rulers he denounced as tyrants and usurpers. He exhorted his followers to believe that none of these rulers could do aught to interfere with the operation of complete home rule if men and angels only had the courage to assert themselves and boldly claim their rights and boldly claim their rights hmm interesting uh, is that not going on on earth too yeah think about the declaration of human rights the declaration of the rights for children I don't know, it's just something to ponder upon. He contended that the executioners of the ancients of days could be debarred, or debarred from functioning in the local systems if the native beings 
would only assert their independence. He maintained that immortality was inherent in the system personalities, that um, resurrection was natural and automatic and that all beings would live eternally except for the arbitrary and unjust acts of the executioners of the ancients of days. And then the third point of this declaration. Three, the attack upon the universal plan of the ascendant mortal training. Lucifer maintained that far too much time and energy were expended upon the scheme of so thoroughly training ascending mortals in the principles of universe administration, principles which he alleged were unethical and unsound. He protested against the age-long program for preparing the mortals of space for some unknown destiny and pointed to the presence of the final lighter corpse on Jerusalem as proof that these mortals had spent ages of preparation for some destiny of pure fiction. With derision, he pointed out that the final lighters had encountered a destiny no more glorious than to be returned to humble spheres similar to those of their origin. He intimated that they had been debauched or debauched by overmuch discipline and prolonged training, and that they were in reality traitors to their mortal mortal fellows since they were now cooperating with the scheme of enslaving all creation to the fictions of a mythical eternal destiny for ascending mortals. He, Lucifer, advocated that ascenders should enjoy the liberty of individual self-determination. So now we get to understand wh where the the root is laid for self-centeredness that we see in human beings and that we can see in ourselves. It has to do with this. He challenged and condemned the entire plan of mortal ascension as sponsored by the Paradise Sons of God and supported by the Infinite Spirit. Infinite Spirit is the Holy Spirit. And there is more to the Infinite Spirit um, that will be explained later on what the Holy Spirit actually is and whom. And it was with such a declaration of liberty that Lucifer launched his orgy of darkness and death. Point four, the outbreak of rebellion. The Lucifer Manifesto was issued at the annual conclave of Satania on the Sea of Glass in the presence of the assembled hosts of Jerusalem on the last day of the year, about 200,000 years ago. Ransi time, so earth time. Satan proclaimed that worship could be accorded the universal forces, physical, intellectual, and spiritual, but that allegiance could be acknowledged only to the actual and present ruler, Lucifer, the so-called friend of men and angels and the so-called God of Liberty. Self-assertion was the battle cry of the Lucifer Rebellion, 
one of his chief arguments was that if self-government was good and right for the Melchizedeks and other groups, it was equally good for all orders of intelligence. He was bold and persistent in the advocacy of the so-called equality of mind and the so-called the brotherhood of intelligence. But he forgot one thing that the Melchizedeks, uh, their existence of being as whom they are was not reached in just one day. That took also thousands if not a few millions of years. He maintained that all government should be limited to local planets and their voluntary confederation into the local systems. All other supervision he disallowed. He promised the planetary princes that they should rule the worlds as supreme executives. He denounced the location of legislative activities on the constellation headquarters and the conduct of uh, judicial affairs on the universe capital. He contended that all these functions of government should be concentrated on the system capitals and proceeded to set up his own legislative, legislative assembly and organized his own tribunals under the jurisdiction of Satan. So that explains, you know, this whole tribunal, uh, this, this done after uh, World War II. Um, <clears throat> where the majority of evildoers were, um, you know, put on uh, on a journey to go to South America and to America. Well, that was the end of Satan because uh, it was never mentioned to have these evildoers um, executed or better said um, to have them, you know, punished for what they have done. So here you can see that actually they got rewarded for all the evilness that they did in the Second World War. And he directed that the princes on the apostate worlds do the same. The entire administrative cabinet of Lucifer went over in a body and were sworn in uh, publicly sworn in publicly as the officers of the administration of the new head of the liberated worlds and systems. Hmm. Now you can know and understand where all these fancy names are coming from that governmental institutions and scientific institutions are using and um, behind th these names is a very sinister agenda. As we can see nowadays rolled out with the so-called green agendas, while there had been two previous rebellions in Nebadom, they were in distant constellations. Lucifer held that these insurrections were unsuccessful because the majority of the intelligences failed to follow their leaders. Now, maybe we should uh, do the same. <laughs> just stop, follow the leaders and just come back to the living God and Creator. He contended that majorities rule that mind is 
infallible. The freedom allowed him by the universe rulers apparently sustained many of his nefarious uh, contentions. He defied all his superiors, yet they apparently took no note of his doings. He was given a free hand to prosecute his seductive plan without let or hindrance. All the merciful delays of justice Lucifer pointed to as evidence of the inability of the government of the Paradise Sons to stop the rebellion, he would openly defy and arrogantly challenge Michael, Emmanuel, and the ancients of days, and then point to the fact that no action ensued as positive evidence of the impotency of the universe and the super-universe governments. Gabriel was personally um, present throughout all these disloyal proceedings and only announced <clears throat> that he would in due time speak for Michael and that all beings would be left free and unmolested in their choice, that the government of the sons for the father desired only that loyalty and devotion which was voluntary, wholehearted and sophistry proof. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to take a break because they don't, uh, the forces and powers that be don't like me to read this to you. <clears throat> All of a sudden something happened with my focal cord. Cords. Lucifer was permitted fully to establish and thoroughly to organize his rebel government before Gabriel made any effort to contest the right of succession or to counterwork the rebel propaganda, but the constellation fathers immediately confined the action of these disloyal personalities to the system of Satania. Nevertheless, this period of delay was a time of great trial and testing to the loyal beings of all Satania. All was chaotic for a few years, and there was great confusion on the mansion worlds. Point 5. Nature of the Conflict Upon the outbreak of the uh, Satania Rebellion, Michael took counsel of his paradise brother, Emmanuel, following this momentous conference. Here, Emmanuel, yeah, that is also, this name is also referred in the Bible, Emmanuel in the Bible is being said as the second name of Jesus. Well, here we read Emmanuel is actually the brother of Michael who became Christ Michael. <clears throat> Following this momentous confer conference, Michael announced that he would pursue the same policy which had characterized his dealings with similar upheavals in the past, an attitude of non-interference. At the time of this rebellion and the two which preceded it, there was no absolute and personal sovereign authority in the universe of Nebadon. Michael ruled by divine right as vicegerent of the universal father, but not yet in his own personal right. He had not completed his bestowal career. He had not yet been vested with all power in heaven and on earth. That is interesting. Ah, now we get a deeper understanding of what happened at the cross. 
when Jesus died at the cross and what actually happened. Because it said in the Bible, eh, Jesus slain the dark, eh, over one the dark, and took the keys, and with that got uh, uh, the rule and the power over the dark and everything. So everything came under his feet. <clears throat> And he, uh, so this is interesting. So here we see clearly a reference to the Bible. And so we can here see what all these translations have done and how much information is actually taken out. So there are, this, this um, book is very good to read in combination with the Bible. And then you get a more in-depth um, information about the things that that is being written in the Bible. So, I continue. <clears throat> From the outbreak of rebellion to the day of his enthronement as sovereign ruler of Nebadon, Michael never interf interfered with the rebel forces of Lucifer. They were allowed to run a free course for almost 200,000 years of Orantia time. Orantia is, all, is the other name of planet Earth. Christ Michael now has ample power and authority to deal promptly, even sum summarily, uh, with such outbreaks of disloyalty. But we doubt that this sovereign authority would lead him to act differently if another such upheaval should occur. Since Michael elected to remain aloof from the actual warfare of the Lucifer Rebellion, Gabriel called his personal staff together on Edensia and in council with the most highs elected to assume command of the loyal hosts of satania michael remained on selfington while gabriel proceeded to jerusalem and establishing himself on the sphere dedicated to the father the father the same universal father whose personality Lucifer and Satan had questioned it. In the presence of the foregathered hosts of loyal personalities, he displayed the banner of Michael, the material emblem of the Trinity government of all creation, the three azure blue concentric circles on a white background. The Lucifer emblem was a banner of white with one red circle in the center of which a black solid circle appeared. That reminds me of these, these, these charts that uh, people use when they have their shooting trainings. Uh, darts. Darts is also one. You have that and then uh, you have the bullseye <coughs> and you have these concentric circles. I think there's a relation with that because I get this picture from the Holy Spirit in uh, in me. So, I proceed. There was war in heaven. Michael's commander and his angels fought against the dragon, Lucifer, Satan, and the apostate princes. Uh, 
and the dragon and his rebellious angels fought but prevailed not this war in heaven was not a physical battle as such a conflict might be conceived on orantia in the early days of the struggle lucifer held forth continuously in the planetary amphitheater gabriel conducted an unceasing exposure of the rebel sof uh, sof sophistries from his headquarters taken up near at hand the various personalities present on the sphere who were in doubt as to their attitude would journey back and forth between these discussions until they arrived at a final decision but this war in heaven was very terrible and very real while displaying none of the barbarities so characteristic of physical warfare on the immature worlds this conflict was far more deadly material life is in jeopardy in material combat but the war in heaven was fought in terms of life eternal and <clears throat> yeah that uh, All right. Point six. A loyal seraphic commander. There were many noble and inspiring acts of devotion and loyalty which were performed by numerous personalities during the interim between the outbreak and hostilities and the arrival of the new system ruler and his staff. But the most thrilling of all these daring feats of devotion was the courageous conduct of Manotia, the second in command of the Satania headquarters, Seraphim. At the outbreak of rebellion on Jerusalem, the head of the Seraphic hosts joined the Lucifer cause. This no doubt explains why such a large number of the fourth order, the system administrator Seraphim, went astray. The Seraphic leader was spiritually blinded by the brilliant personality of Lucifer. His charming ways fascinated the lower orders of celestial beings. Well, this is something you also can describe as dazzling. Look at how the marketing machine works. It dazzles us into the false belief and lies that we have to buy these jeans, these sneakers that technological device or this gadget or have to eat that food or have to speak like that or have to behave like this the marketing machine lovely brothers and sisters is dazzling you and the word that is being used to dazzle you the most is the word free if you get this if you buy this you get this free if you take this abonnement then you get for free this tablet or phone or whatever we humans have been blinded by this dazzling effect of Lucifer and his assistants, Caligastia and Satan.
And see, you know, look at, I also want to point out to the New Age movement, because look at the New Age movement, how it is loaded with all these charismatic looking boys and girls. These charismatic looking men and women who lure so many fellow brothers, fellow human brothers and sisters into their trap. Into whose trap? Lucifer's trap. I proceed. They simply could not comprehend that it was possible for such a dazzling personality to go wrong. Well, I can imagine because if you are from a lower order and not yet developed enough to see through, yeah, well, that's the same what happens here on earth. The majority of human brothers and sisters are not yet in their soul, in their spiritualness developed enough to see through the lies and deception and dazzling. Not long since in describing the experiences associated with the onset of the Lucifer Rebellion, Manotia said, but my most exhilarating moment was the thrilling adventure connected with the Lucifer Rebellion when, as second Seraphic commander, I refused to participate in the projected insult to Michael, and the powerful rebels sought my destruction by men's. Of the liaison forces they had arranged, there was a tremendous upheaval on Jerusalem, but not a single loyal seraphim was harmed. Upon the default of my immediate super superior, it devolved upon me to assume command of the angelic hosts of Jerusalem as the titular or titular director of the confused seraphic affairs of the system. I was morally upheld by the Melchizedek's a bly assistant assisted by a majority of the material sons, deserted by a tremendous group of my own order, but magnificently supported by the ascended mortals on Jerusalem. Having been automatically thrown out of the constellation circuits by the, uh, the secession of Lucifer, we were dependent on the loyalty of our intelligence corps, who forwarded calls for help to Edentia from the nearby system of Rantulia. And we found that the kingdom of order, the intellect of loyalty, and the uh, spirit of truth were inherently triumphant over rebellion, self-assertion, and so-called personal liberty. We were able to carry on until the arrival of the new system, Sovereign, the worthy successor of Lucifer, and immediately thereafter I was assigned to the corpse of the Melchizedek receivership of Orancia, assuming jurisdiction over the loyal seraphic orders on the world of Tritorius uh, Caligastia, who had proclaimed his sphere a member of the newly projected system of liberated worlds and emancipated personalities proposed in the 
infamous Declaration of Liberty issued by Lucifer in his call to the liberty-loving, free-thinking, and forward-looking intelligences of the misruled and maladministered worlds of Satania. This angel is still in service on Urantia, functioning as associate chief of Seraphim. So it's still here on earth. Point seven, history of the rebellion. The Lucifer rebellion was system-wide. 37 uh, seceding planetary princes swung their world administrations largely to the side of the Ark Rebel. 37. Wow. Just not only this planet. More of them. Only on Panoptia did the planetary prince fail to carry his people with him. On this world, under the guidance of the Melchizedeks, the people rallied to the support of Michael. Eleonora, a young woman of that mortal realm, grasped the leadership of the human races. Hmm, interesting. So there are more planets with human beings. And not a single soul on that strife-torn world enlisted under the Lucifer banner. And ever since have these loyal Panopti Panoptians <coughs> served on the Seventh Jerusalem transition world as the caretakers and builders on the Father's sphere and its surrounding seven detention worlds. Seven detention worlds. The Panoptians not only act as the literal custodians of these worlds, but they also execute the personal orders of Michael for the embellishment of these spheres for some future and unknown use. They do this work as they tarry and as they tarry en route to Edentia. So they do this work as they tarry en route to Edentia. Throughout this period, Caligastia was advocating the cause of Lucifer on Urantia. The Melchizedek's Abli opposed the apostate planetary prince. Apostate? Apostolic? Hmm, quite close to each other. What does that reveal? But the sophistries of unbridled liberty and the delusions of self-assertion had every opportunity for deceiving the primitive peoples of a young and undeveloped world. And, um, yeah, well, unfortunately. Otherwise, um, if that was not the case, then we wouldn't have had all the things that we are dealing now, today. All secession propaganda had to be carried on by personal effort because the broadcast surface and all other avenues of interplanetary communication were suspended by the action of the system circuit supervisors. Upon the actual outbreak of the insurrection, the entire system of Satania was isolated in both the constellation and the universe circuits. During this time, all incoming and, outco and outgoing messages were dispatched by seraphic agents and solitary messengers. Um, the Father shows me when I will um, read about what these solitary messengers are and also about the whole seraphic um, system 
order, and so on. The circuits to the fallen worlds were also cut off, so that Lucifer could not utilize this avenue for the furtherance of his nefarious scheme. And these circuits will not be restored so long as the Ark Rebel lives within the confines of Satania. This was a La Nonandek rebellion. The higher orders of local universe sonship did not join the Lucifer secession, although a few of the life carriers stationed on the rebel planets were somewhat influenced by the rebellion of the disloyal princess. None of the trinitized sons went astray. The Melchizedek's archangels and the brilliant evening stars were all loyal to Michael and with Gabriel um, valiantly contended for the father's perfect will and the son's rule. No beings of paradise origin were involved in disloyalty. In the life carriers is also a topic I will uh, read about too, so that you get a deeper understanding of whom they are. Together with the solitary messengers, they took up headquarters on the world of the spirit and remained under the leadership of the faithful of days of Edentia. None of the conciliators apost um, aposta apostatized, nor did a single one of the celestial recorders go astray. But a heavy toll was taken on the Morontia companions and the mansion world teachers of the supreme order of Seraphim. Not an angel was lost, but a considerable group of the next order, the superior, were deceived and ensnared. Likewise, a few of the third or supervisor order of angels were misled. So, what we read in the Bible about these fallen angels were actually, and about uh, in the Bible it is stated, this, this sentence almost is uh, the same in the Bible, almost. In the Bible said uh, uh, a few of the third or also in the book of Enoch, but in the Bible too, um, third of the angels fell. But it's not mentioned that these were supervisor. These, these angels were part of a order of supervisor angels. So you have an order of angels that has the task, uh, the, the job description of supervisor. But the terrible breakdown came in the fourth group, the administrator angels. Those seraphim who are normally assigned to the duties of the system capitals, Manotia saved almost two-thirds of them, but slightly over one-third followed their chief into the rebel ranks. So it's uh, amongst the fallen angels, we must see it like this. Some were part of a group that had as job title supervisor, and some were part of um, a group that had the, the job of being administrator. One third of all the 
Jerusalem Kerubim attached to the administrator angels were lost with their disloyal seraphim. So you have a seraphim and uh, attached to them is a cherubim. So they work in togetherness. Of the planetary angelic helpers, those assigned to the material sons, about one third were deceived and almost 10% of the transition ministers were ensnared. So that's quite a lot. And so now we get a deeper understanding of whom these fallen angels actually were and what their functions were um, and from what order they came actually. Yeah, the order of administrators, uh, supervisor, um, ministers of transition. In symbol, John saw, so John, John eh, from uh, Revelation, the book of Revelation, John saw this when he wrote of the great red dragon saying and his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and cast them down in darkness. The greatest loss occurred in the angelic ranks but most of the lower orders of intelligence were involved in disloyalty of the <clears throat> of the 681,000 comma 217 material sons lost in Satania 95% were casualties of the Lucifer Rebellion. Wow, that is a huge loss. Large numbers of midway creatures were lost on those individual planets whose planetary prince joined the Lucifer cause. So this whole rebellion took an, a numerous amount of lives and life forms. And not only just on this planet, on more planets. 37 in total. In many respects, this rebellion was the most widespread and disastrous of all such occurrences in Nebadon. More personalities were involved in this insurrection than in both of the others. And it is to their everlasting dishonor that the emissaries of Lucifer and Satan spared not the infant training schools on the finaliter cultural planet, but rather sought to corrupt these developing minds in mercy, selfished from the evolutionary worlds. The ascending mortals were vulnerable, but they withstood the sophistries of rebellion better than the lower spirits. So you can say they were more in, in, in spiritual, uh, they as spirits were more developed. So that's why they uh, didn't go along with the whole rebellion. They saw through. While many on the lower mansion worlds and what mention worlds are, the Father will uh, show me when the time is there to bring that information to you and pass on that information on to you about mention worlds. Those who had not attained final fusion with their adjusters, adjusters is also something the Father will tell me when it's time to um, pass on to you the information uh, what adjusters are. So with their adjusters uh, fell, it is recorded to the glory of the wisdom of the ascension scheme 
that not a single member of the Satania ascended, ascendant citizenship resident on Jerusalem participated in the Lucifer rebellion. So again, those who had not attained final fusion with their adjusters fell, it is recorded to the glory of the wisdom of the ascension scheme that not a single member of the Satania ascendant citizenship resident on Jerusalem participated in the Lucifer rebellion. Hour by hour and day by day the broadcast stations of all Nebadon were thronged by the anxious watchers of every imaginable class of celestial intelligences who intently perused the bullet bulletins the the, the uh, uh, news flashes the <coughs> of the satania rebellion and rejoiced as the reports continuously narrated the unswerving loyalty of the ascending mortals who under their Melchizedek leadership successfully withstood the combined and protracted efforts of all the subtle evil forces which so swiftly gathered around the banners of secession and sin. It was over two years of system time from the beginning of the war in heaven until the installation of Lucifer's successor, but at last the new sovereign came, landing on the sea of glass with his staff. I was among the reserves mobilized on Edentia by Gabriel, and I well remember the first message of Lana Lana Forge to the constellation father of Norlesia deck. It read Not a single Jerusalem citizen was lost. Every ascendant mortal survived the fiery trial and emerged from the crucial test triumphant and altogether victorious and on the selfington uversa and paradise went this message as assurance that the survival experience of mortal ascension is the greatest security against rebellion and the surest safeguard against sin so this noble jerusalem band of faithful mortals numbered just 187 million 432,811 with the arrival of Lana Forge the Ark rebels were dethroned and shorn of all governing powers though they were permitted freely to go about Jerusalem the Moronsia spheres and even to the individual inhabited worlds they continued their deceptive and seductive efforts to confuse and mislead the minds of men and angels. But as concerned their work on the administrative mound of Jerusalem, their place was found no more. So we need to see, I think, the book, the first book of Enoch especially, the first book of Enoch, I think we need to see it from a different perspective. And uh, I would say buy this book, this Orancia book yourselves too, and read the first book of Enoch, which is the most, um, which is the, uh, the, the, the book of which many say that is actually the one you should read and the others not. But anyways, start reading the first book of Enoch and in, in, in combination with this Orantia book and the Bible and see 
where you can get the dots connected because <clears throat> there are dots in this whole picture you can connect so probably Enoch was revealing something of what is being described in this Orantia book too while Lucifer was deprived of all administrative authority in Satania there then existed no lo local universe power nor tribunal which could detain or destroy this wicked rebel at that time Michael was not a sovereign ruler the ancients of day sustained the constellation fathers in their seizure of the system government but they have never handed down any subsequent decisions in the many appeals still pending with regard to the present status and future disposition of Lucifer Satan and their associates thus were these arch rebels allowed to roam the entire system to seek further penetration for their doctrines of discontent and self-assertion but in almost 200,000 Orancia years they have been unable to deceive another world no Satania worlds have been lost since the fall of the 37 not even those younger worlds peopled since that day of rebellion and then the I think it's the yeah almost point eight the son of man on Orancia so here comes the title son of man and Jesus named himself the son of man Lucifer and Satan freely roamed the Satania system until the con completion of the bestowal mission of Michael on Orancia here on earth they were lost on your world together during the time of their combined assault upon the son of man formerly <coughs> when the planetary princes the sons of God were periodically assembled Satan came also claiming that he represented all of the isolated worlds of the fallen planetary princes but he has not been accorded such liberty on Jerusalem since Michael's terminal bestowal subsequent to their effort to corrupt Michael when in the bestowal flesh all sympathy for Lucifer and Satan has perished throughout all Satania and that is outside the isolated worlds of sin the bestowal of Michael terminated the Lucifer rebellion in all Satania aside from the planets of the apostate planetary princes and this was the significance of Jesus personal experience just before his death in the flesh when he one day exclaimed to his disciples and I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven he had come with Lucifer to Orancia for the last crucial struggle the son of man was confident of success well we should have such a confidence and he knew that his triumph on your world would forever settle the status of his age-long enemies not only in Satania but also in the other two systems where sin had entered there was survival for mortals and security for angels when your master in reply to the Lucifer proposals 
calmly and with divine assurance replied get you behind me Satan and this is actually what we should do on daily basis that was in principle the real end of the Lucifer rebellion get you behind me Satan that was in principle the real end of the Lucifer rebellion true the Uversa tribunals have not yet rendered the executive decision regarding the appeal of Gabriel praying for the destruction of the rebels but such a decree will no doubt be forthcoming in the fullness of time since the first step in the hearing of this case has already been taken Caligastia was recognized by the son of man as the technical prince of Orancia up to near the time of his death Jesus said now is the judgment of this world now shall the prince of this world be cast down and then still nearer the completion of his life work he announced the prince of this world is judged and it is this same dethroned and discredited prince who was once termed the so-called God of Urantia. The last act of Michael before leaving Urantia was to offer mercy to Caligastia and Daligastia, who was the right hand of Gali, Caligastia. So the last act of Michael before leaving Urantia was to offer mercy to Caligastia and Daligastia, but they spurned his tender proffer. Caligastia, your apostate planetary prince, is still free on Urantia to prosecute his nefarious designs, but he has absolutely no power to enter the minds of men neither can he draw near to their souls to tempt or corrupt them unless they really desire to be cursed with his wicked presence before the bestowal of michael these rulers of darkness sought to maintain their authority on urantia and they persistently withstood the minor and subordinate celestial personalities but since the day of Pentecost, this traitorous Caligastia and his equally contemptible associate Daligastia are servile before the divine majesty of the paradise, thought at justers, and the protective spirit of truth, the spirit of Michael, which has been poured out upon all flesh yeah who is Jesus Christ that is Michael Christ Michael and it is his spirit that we receive and have received when you get immersed you receive his spirit so the spirit of truth which is the spirit of Michael which has been poured out upon all flesh but even so no fallen spirit ever did have the power to invade the minds or to harass the souls of the children of the living God neither Satan nor Caligastia could ever touch <coughs> or approach the faith sons of God 
Faith is an effective armor against sin and iniquity. It is true, he who is born of God keeps himself and the wicked one touches him not. In general, when weak and dissolute mortals are supposed to be under the influence of devils and demons, they are merely being dominated by their own inherent and debased tendencies, being led away by their own natural uh, propensities. The devil has been given a great deal of credit for evil which does not belong to him, so we need to stop doing so. Caligastia has been comparatively impotent since the cross of Christ. So all those who uh, have some meaning about the cross and are trying to lure people in the idea that the cross is not good and it's uh, an, uh, an evil symbol, <coughs> um, we should flip this uh, in a way that it is being said by those who are still heavenly influenced by um, um, evilness. So Caligastia has been comparatively impotent since the cross of Christ. So 9, this is the last piece of this chapter, point 9, present status of the rebellion. Early in the days of the Lucifer rebellion, salvation was offered all rebels by Michael, to all who would show proof of sincere repentance. He offered upon his attainment of complete universal sovereignty, forgiveness and reinstatement in some form of universal service. None of the leaders accepted this merciful proffer, but thousands of the angels and the lower orders of celestial beings, including hundreds of material sons and daughters, <coughs> accepted the mercy proclaimed by the Panoptians and were given rehabilitation at the time of Jesus' resurrection 1900 years ago. These beings have since been transferred to the Father's world of Jerusalem, where they must be held technically until the Uversa courts hand down a decision in the matter of Gabriel versus, versus sorry, Lucifer. But no one doubts that when the annihilation verdict is issued, these re, um, repentant and selfish personalities will be exempted from the decree of extinction. These probationary souls now labor with the Panoptians in the work of caring for the Father's world. The Ark Deceiver has never been on Orantia since the days when he sought to turn back Michael from the purpose to complete the bestowal and to establish himself finally and securely as the unqualified ruler of Nebadom upon Michael's custody by the agents of the Uversa ancients of days <coughs> and has since been a prisoner on satellite number one of the father's group of the transition spheres of Jerusalem. And here the rulers of other worlds and systems behold the end of the unfaithful sovereign of Satania. Paul knew 
of the status of these rebellious leaders following Michael's bestowal. For he wrote of Caligastia's chiefs as spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Michael, upon assuming the supreme sovereignty of Nebadon, petitioned the ancients of days for authority to in turn all personalities concerned in the Lucifer rebellion pending the rulings of the super universe tribunals in the case of Gabriel versus Lucifer placed on the records of the Uver Uversa Supreme Court almost 200,000 years ago as you reckon time concerning the system capital group the ancients of days granted the Michael petition with but a single exception Satan was allowed to make periodic visits to the apostate princes on the fallen worlds until another son of God should be accepted by such apostate worlds or until such time as the courts of Uversa should begin the abjuration of the case of Gabriel versus Lucifer. <coughs> <coughs> Satan could come to Urantia because you had no son of standing in residence neither planetary prince nor material son. Machiaventa Melchizedek has since been proclaimed vicegerent vice planetary prince of Orancia and the opening of the case of Gabriel versus Lucifer has signalized the inauguration of tempor uh, temporary planetary regimes regimes on all the isolated worlds it is true that Satan did periodically visit Caligastia and others of the fallen princes right up to the time of the presentation of these revelations when there occurred the first hearing of Gabriel's plea for the annihilation of the arch rebels Satan is now unqualifiedly detained on the Jerusalem prison worlds. Since Michael's final bestowal, no one in all Satania has desired to go to the prison worlds to minister to the interned rebels, and no more beings have been won to the deceiver's cause for 1900 years the status has been unchanged. We do not look for a removal of the present Satania restrictions until the ancients of days make final disposition of the Ark Rebels. The system circuits will not be reinstated so long as Lucifer lives. Meantime, he is wholly inactive. The rebellion has ended on Jerusalem it ends on the fallen worlds as fast as divine sons arrive. We believe that all rebels who will ever accept mercy have done so. We await the flashing broadcast that will deprive these traitors of personality existence. We anticipate the verdict of Uversa will be announced by the executionary broadcast which will affect the annihilation of these interned rebels. Then will you look for their places, but they shall not be found. And they who know you among the worlds will be astonished at you. You have been a terror, but never shall you be any more. And thus shall all of these unworthy traitors become as though they had not been. All await 
the Uversa decree. But for ages, ooh, the seven prison worlds of spiritual darkness in Satania have constituted a solemn warning to all Nebadon, eloquently and effectively proclaiming the great truth that the way of the transgressor is hard, that within every sin is concealed the seed of its own destruction, that the wages of sin is death. And this information is presented by Mano van Det, Melchizedek, one time attached to the receivership of Orancia. And with this said, I have come to the end of reading this chapter and passing unto you this very interesting information. Let it all sink into you and um, I would say ask the Holy Spirit for confirmation, for clarification, for more in-depth understanding. Do not come to me or whatsoever, but go to the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit for confirmation ask the Holy Spirit if the information that you have heard is truth based ask the Holy Spirit if you do not understand what is being said what is the, the, the information that is passed on to you ask the Holy Spirit for clarification clearance and more in-depth understanding I hope that this gives another perspective on the world view that you have so far from this world. I hope it will give you a deeper understanding of what is being spoken of in the Bible and please have the Bible with it because there, there are connections with the Orancia book and the Bible. <clears throat> and um, well the next time I will see what the father wants you to know and um, for the rest I wish you a whole be uh, a beautiful day and um, do not forget to give your thanksgiving to the almighty living God and creator of the universe um, in all the things you do say and um, eat and drink and I say to you as last God bless you <laughs>